All right, it's 610. Woo! Let's get into this. What's going on, guys? I am Banker. This is Lifted Live, and I told you I wasn't going to bring Dustin back, but Brad Flake. So Surprise, we're here. <laughs> Doesn't matter anyway, right? It's fine. Dustin knows just as much as anybody else, and he's fun to talk to and hang out with. So, yesterday, yesterday, this it feels morning. like yesterday. Mm. Last week, we did our first live stream. Posted it earlier today. Asked you guys to uh, give us some ideas for what you want to talk about tonight. There's a lot of a lot of questions on there. Um, one that was resounding was, you know, what should I do with my truck that's a little bit older? A little bit older? A little bit older? Like, how do you lift an older truck? How do you lift an older truck? So today, today for the first half of our little show here, we are going to discuss what it's like and what to expect and how exactly to go about lifting an older truck. And depending on where you live on, older truck can mean a few different things. Mm -hmm. Down south, an older truck might be an 80s, early 90s truck. Up here, trucks get old as soon as they're five, six years old. <laughs> like, honestly, For real. when it comes into a lift kit perspective. Winter is not nice to Winter is not kind to anything. I mean, it's not winter. It's, it's salt. It's the stuff they put on the roads yep. up here. It's not even salt anymore. It's some sort of chemical concoction that a, just eats everything. It's a beet pressing, actually. Believe it or not. That's the good stuff. That's true. The stuff that eats the everything brine. is like, yeah. yeah, the brine, the calcium Eat chloride it. stuff. Um, <laughs> what do you got? Dustin's wearing his church pants. Yeah. I, I am wearing, wearing my good church pants. I saw all the holes. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Dustin clearly does a lot of work here all day today. So, brother, <laughs> the one day I wear nice pants. The one day. I wore my nice pants too. These ones are the cleanest ones I own, I think. I wish I could say I was surprised. <laughs> um, so, that being said, depending on where you are, older trucks are going to mean something different to you. So, I'm just going to start with the generic. If you own anything like, let's say 1985 or older, I don't care where you live, you're probably doing some sort of a restoration to that truck when you're lifting it, right? Right yeah, on. I mean, I would agree wholeheartedly. I don't think even southern trucks start to get rough, rough when they're you know, yeah, 30, 40 years old. Yeah, you're talking 40 <clears throat> years of sitting around, being together, being driven, probably not being treated very kindly. Yeah, and everyone always says southern trucks are so nice too, but what they don't what they don't realize is that up here, the salt eats and the and the you know the anti ice agents eat the salt away, but. Down south, the sun just bakes the paint right off the metal. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know? Well, that's cool now. That's patina. Patina. We we call it patina up here too, but it's actually just rust holes. For <laughs> real. Like we missing, can, we missing the it. cab corners. It's patina, bro. Just yeah, leave it. it's patina. <laughs> Wait, why don't you have any rockers? Patina. Yeah. Weight reduction. <laughs> exactly. Race truck. Race truck makes it fast. Yep. Um. So at that point, it's kind of all across the board. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've had a few older trucks in here that age. You basically, you take them down to nothing to put the lift kits in. And back then, trucks were much simpler than they are now. So lift kits don't take as long either. A couple add leafs and some spacers and you call her a day. Exactly. So those are much much easier to do do yourself, you know, if you if you got to do it in the driveway or anything like that. Um, so let's move on to the next decade. So OBS trucks. So we're, we're out of the square bodies. OBS trucks, 90s. Um, down south, you might have a little bit cleaner versions than what we get up here. Um, pretty much anything older than 2005 up here is just forsaken and good luck doing anything to them. Um, but, you know, OBS Chevy, so 88 to 98s. The old classic Chevy. The, the classic Chevys, they're super popular still. Um, everybody wants to put lift kits on them, big wheels. I've seen a lot of really clean examples coming out down south, especially Florida area, Alabama. Um, what you, you literally said, Oh, I can't wait to talk about this. <laughs> yeah. Tell them the joys of lifting an OBS truck in the suspension side. Okay. Hold on. So let me tell you what you shouldn't do first. Cause I did this. <laughs> What's up? I know, no, no. I know exactly oh. what you're going to talk about. There is, I had a 92 extended cab short box, half ton GMC. Mm -hmm. And one of the first things I did is I found out that the front end has torsion bars and with torsion bars come torsion keys, which are these little key shaped things that sit on bolts that thread up through the frame, you know, 
And I realized that you can get under there with an impact and for zero dollars, you can just send her home and it'll pick the front end of your truck up. And how does that ride? Like crap. <laughs> so don't do that. That's not fun. Right, <laughs> exactly. So a lot of guys, you know, the big thing these days is small lifts, big wheels and tires. Mm -hmm. These trucks, they don't make small lifts for. Not you, really. You make, they make keys. You turn the keys up, it rides like crap, and you got, you can put a little bit bigger wheels and tires. So and even, see, you should say too that we're not talking like you can get a 35 in there. It's like you can, you can go with a bigger torsion key and it'll ride rough and you can maybe slide a 33 in there. Right, a 33 in there, as long as it's not too wide. Correct. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, these torsion bar trucks, again, up here is our experience. Down south, it's going to be a little bit different, but again, it's a truck that's been together for 30 years. Getting torsion keys out Ooh. and going to a lift. So you'll see that lift kits don't start until like four and a half, five inches for mm -hmm. these trucks. Getting the keys out is like the biggest pain. Air hammer is a must. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think you Big can do torch. it one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we're working on Blair's truck this week. Literally, the truck is... Well, she's 20 years old now. Stop it. You make me feel yeah, old. Yeah, exactly. That's rough. It's 2000. And I'm with 30 hours into it, Yeah, cutting it apart, getting everything. Brent, I think, is vi in his sleep vibrates from the air hammer. <laughs> like, it's just how these trucks go. Um, now, in the Ford Spectrum, the two-wheel drive trucks were just springs. So that's 1,500 you know, Chevys and Fords. On the Ford Spectrum, TTBs. So... Like Jared's Bronco, mm -hmm. the twin, twin, twin I beam. Twin I beam. Yeah. What an absolute nightmare at the same time. Those things are cool though, because when you pick them up on the lift, the tires go. Hey. Yeah. And they go. Actually, they go this. Way. Yeah, because the yes. I beam falls out, and they just go. Bleh. And it's neat. Yeah. They're they're super neat until you try to do something <laughs> to them, especially in a truck up here. Oh yeah. Again, out west, down south, I'm sure these trucks are a lot cleaner, but you're in for the fight of your life. Like, oh yeah. Jared's super lift kit, um, really, it was a long arm kit, so it had a long, it has a longer radius arm that mounts off that TTB, right? Mm -hmm. So we had to drill through the frame, pull that I that you know that radius arm out, put the new one in. So you're like moving it around on the lift because, of course, as soon as you lift the truck up, the radius arm is in the way of the, the mm -hmm. hoist arm, and it's just it's, it's just, an absolute nightmare. It's straight up not a good time, bro. Not at all. You're gonna be right in the frame. Yeah, why would you do that? Like literally, the frame is like right by the clothing rack. Is there. he sleeping or is he awake? Bring him in. He's awake. Bring in the baby banker. Bring him in. Let's go. Bring him in. Yeah. Come on. Just like slide him across the floor. She just closed her backpack in the door, <laughs> and she can't move. Let's go. All right. Here, let me slide over. You put him right between us. There we go. There we go. Look at Boone's making his YouTube uh, YouTube yep. debut at this point. This is Boone. He's like a month and a half old, so he knows everything there is to know about OBS Chevy trucks. So he's gonna help us out. Um, we're what we're talking about. We're talking about TTBs. Yep, yep. And what a pain they are. So these, imagine a straight axle that's hinged in the middle. So as soon as you let everything loose, it just flops around like a fish. <laughs> right, buddy? You can you do that? Yeah, flops around like a fish. <laughs> And it's just an absolute nightmare to work on. Yeah, they're just not fun. They're, and they're not fun. You tack on top of it that they're 20 to 30 year old trucks and all the rust that comes with it and yep. there's nothing fun about that. And these trucks, even a clean example, if you've spent 30 years, things are gonna need to be replaced. Oh, yeah. So that's what a lot of people don't realize is you're gonna spend almost just as much as you did on that kit in replacement parts. The kit doesn't replace as much yeah. as you think it does. So be prepared for that. Um, as we move into the NBS body style trucks. Um, Ooh, NBS. Both. Fancy. That's what they are called. <laughs> um, Ford and Chevy still torsion bar trucks. Yeah. Still a giant pain. Really not that big of a difference from the OBS trucks. Other than you get less rust usually. Not always. But sometimes. Usually. Sometimes, yeah. Usually less rust um, and worse fitment. <laughs> Honestly. Mm -hmm. So these yeah, because they go to more compact. Yeah, compact size trucks, yeah. square wheel wells, yep. um, yeah. you know, into the cat eye trucks, which are becoming super popular. We deal with these things all the time. They're always a pain to come apart. I know. I'm trying to buy a clean one. I want one. If anybody's got a clean cat eye out there for like under 10 Gs, 
Hit me up. Hit up Dustin. I'll come get it. We'll make a movie out of it. Absolutely. Great time. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Um, you know, and then, like we said, up here, I'm sure, you know, these guys are like, cat eye trucks are super clean. That's why we all have them. Not up here. No, man. It's so tough. I stopped and looked at one the other day. Had like, I think it had like 140,000 miles on it. So moderate for an 04. And uh, they had put some of those nice, like, rocker covers on it, the plastic, and it looked really good. And then I climbed underneath it, and I pulled it down, and the whole cap corner is just gone. The whole rocker is just, just, just gone. It's in 2004. Yeah. Boop. Look at how soothing your voice is. He's asleep. He doesn't want to talk about trucks. Dude is cashed. I know. Yeah, he's you out. Can take him if you want. <laughs> but here, we'll give him back to mom so he can sleep. <laughs> All right. In 07 to 13, trucks are very popular, right? Uh -huh. Up here, I'm I'm happy when we come across a clean one, because mm. you can still find clean ones here. It's, yeah, it's rare. You know, it's it's getting harder and harder to find. But the 07 to 13 trucks, both for well, 08 to 14 F 150s, 07 to 13 GM trucks, um, these all we've alienated Ram this entire time, but. They're straight axle trucks up until 2009. So it's because they're easy to lift. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're super easy to be done. Um, this, yeah, a lot of these issues are going to go across the board for all platforms. Um, but the newer trucks with the struts and everything, now you're getting into the fancier lift kits, the more expensive stuff. But everybody thinks that you know an 07 to 13 because they're still twenty thousand dollar trucks that they should come apart clean. And up here, they don't. They do not. Yeah. They do not. Even I've had some come from down south that are just they're so high mileage, or they've just been driven for so long, they're just stuck together. So the big thing to take away from this: lifting an older truck, it's going to be expensive. It's going to be a lot tougher than a clean truck. Be prepared. Just be. Just plan. Know going into it that you're going to have to replace some parts. Even you get up to 2012, 2013, and you have to you start looking at rebuilding upper control arms and, and mm -hmm. tie rod ends and stuff. You get in there and you realize that it it's a truck with 120,000 miles on it. It's probably starting to see some wear. Yeah. And a lot of these lift kits don't they, they rely on those parts. Correct. So you know they they're happy in their little home where they've been for the last 20 years, 15, 20 years. You start taking them out of that area, and everything's just going to go to hell real mm -hmm. quick. So. You know, we get high school guys, kids in here all the time. Like, they just got their first truck. They saved up their first thousand dollars. They're ready to buy a rough country lift kit. And I'm like, guys, you, gotta, you know, it, it breaks my heart. But like, you got to tell them, like, you'll be prepared to double that price. Because we've all been there, right? I mean, I remember looking at lifts for my my '92 when I had it back in high school, and it was the same thing. It was, I could buy a rough country six inch lift kit for, I think at the time, six hundred and fifty dollars, and I went and took it in for a quote. For a shop to install it because I didn't have a lift or anything, and the guy quoted me like eighteen hundred bucks. I, I lost it, you know. Yeah. I was like, "What are you talking about?" And then he's like, "Well, you have to replace these parts, and you know, we anticipate it's going to take longer because it's pretty rusty, you know." Absolutely, the way it's, it goes. It's the way it is. So, it's always nice. It's always fun to get your first truck or to get an older truck and get all excited about it. Just be prepared. You're going to have to spend a little bit of money. Yeah, just know going into it. As long as you're you have an open mind about that, you'll be fine. Bank a rough country or super lift. That's a really loaded question. Mm -hmm. They're both really good quality for their price points. Um, I it, it all depends on the application too. Mm -hmm. um, some of the Rough Country kits are a little bit nicer than the Superlift variants. And at the same time, some of the Superlift variants are a little bit nicer than the Rough Country. Well, what are you comparing? Are you comparing a King kit to a, a Spacer Lift? Are you comparing a Vertex kit to a Superlift Spacer Lift? You know? Yeah, no, no, no. It's so, a loaded question. GM. 07 to 13 GM three and a half inch kits are easily the most popular one that we sell through the store. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't do a lot of installs on them, but we sell them a lot. People do these at home. I like Superlift's upper control arm and knuckle design and everything a little bit more than I like the Rough Country one. Sure. And at the same price point, I'll steer somebody towards that one over the other. At the same time, you can get a seven inch Rough Country for like 200 bucks less than a six inch super lift, even if we're talking, you know, a spacer kit, whatever. Yep. If you want that extra inch on there and it's a 200 bucks cheaper, why not, you know, go for it. Yeah. There's not 
a significant difference in either of the kits. If you get into the King kit versus the Vertex kit, well, yeah, the King kit's superior. Correct. The Vertex kit is a very nice kit, but it's a very entry-level coilover kit. But And that's, I think, the point I was trying to make there is it's insane to me that... I remember when coilovers first started, like coilover kits and trucks first came out, mm -hmm. and you could only get them from the, the high-end manufacturers. And you can now buy... I believe for most applications, a, a, a Vertex kit is sub-2,500 bucks or sub-2,700 bucks. Oh, yeah. You know? yeah. That's a fantastic deal. You're talking coil, reservoir coilover suspension lift for under 3 Gs? Yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. And they ride fairly well. Yeah. Jeremy has it on his truck. I'm actually, I was surprised by the, the, by the ride quality of that kit. So Yeah, it's pretty good. What is the best-selling wheel that you guys sell? I'd have to look at the data. I don't know. I know last year it was the TAS 544 in black and milled, I think was neck and neck with the Lincoln, the Archon Lincoln. The Archon Lincoln. They were right there up and until I think it came down to the end of the year as to which one was first, which one was second. So I think, I think this year my prediction, and I haven't checked any data yet, my prediction is that the 547 will take over for the 544 and the Caesar will take over for the, for the Lincoln. So I think it's going to be the, the battle of the thin-spoked, forward-sweeping forward, design. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Yeah. Um, okay, so Dustin, <laughs> not you. Oh, I was like, what? Different Dustin has a 6.5-inch zone kit on his 2010 GMC CR1500. It's the Spacer kit, right? Okay. Um, he also installed the Adelief, so now he's got a, a – the rake is back because okay. he had the Adelief on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so his question is, can he install the bottom spacer on top of the lower control arm? I know we had this discussion, so I want to see if you've learned anything. Can you or should you? Can you? Can you and should you? Can you? Yes, should you? No. I mean, physic. Well, physically, of course you can. Uh, you could, right? You could if you wanted to. Right. You you probably should. I would not. That is that's where we get into stacking lifts. If it was a one piece strut assembly, I would say you know you, then you're a little bit safer. Yeah, throw a leveling kit underneath it. You're good to go. Um, Stack, you know, stacking a leveling kit underneath something with a top hat spacer is kind of a gray area. It's better than stacking a leveling kit on top of a strut spacer. <laughs> That's, you don't want to do that. Yeah, you shouldn't do that. That, that you don't want to do at all. Um, my recommendation would be to find some six inch lift struts. They're all, they're out there. You can get them. Um, different couple, couple of brands make them. And then put a leveling kit on it or go with an eight inch strut um they're available for your vehicle through bds who owns zone so everything's possible just do it the right way correct um you see anything good i'm just scrolling jake on instagram wants us to rate any level lift rate any level lift? yeah i don't really know how to rate it like i guess what are your thoughts um i think it's a very good kit in theory, I feel like there's some things that could be worked out. Um, I know everybody gets super hyped up because obviously it's hydraulic adjustable. It goes from negative two to plus 18. It's an insane range of motion. Um, what people kind of don't dig into is the mechanics of it. So that's a lot of hydraulic fluid and a lot of battery power. Yep. Where is that? In the bed. In the bed. Yep. You basically lose your bed. Yep. Um, or a good half of it, a good chunk of it, to hydraulic pumps and reservoirs and battery banks mm -hmm. and things like that. So, okay, Austin Fuller wants to know if you can fit, yeah, right? Wants to fit 37 tires, 37s with 20 by 10s or 20 by 9s on a 03 Ram 1500 two wheel drive with four inch. No, sir. And not without massive amounts of cutting. Massive cutting. 35s you could probably do though. Yeah. Right? You should be able to stuff a 35 in there, especially on a 9 wide. On a 9 something narrow. Yeah, on a 9 wide, absolutely. We got an Instagram that says, Should I put long travel suspension on my 2004 Forerunner daily driver? I already have a 3 inch icon lift. Oh, yeah, he was on, on the live too. I was looking for that. Um, if he's already on an icon lift, I mean, yeah. icon makes really good stuff. That is a great question. Really? A quick answer is not necessary for a daily. If you really want to get into trail driving, Absolutely, long arm is the way to go. Levi just asked me a question, 
and Levi Landis, I hope you're paying attention. If you're going to call them rims, I'm not going to answer your question. Ooh! <laughs> Called out on a live stream. Yikes. Uh, J-Rod here on Instagram wants to know, is it your preference to work on American Made, or is that the majority of your clientele? Yes to both, honestly. Um, it is the majority of what we see in here are American trucks. Um, we'll get, fairly often we'll get Toyota, you know, Tundras and Tacomas in here with the occasional 4Runner sprinkled in. They're mostly low, you know, three, four inch lift tops, guys that are gonna go off-roading. So we don't see a whole lot of show quality um, foreign trucks around here. Um, and they're kind of a pain to work on, I'm not gonna lie. Toyota made this, I don't know, at some point in their engineering department, they decided that one bolt going through the entire upper control arm and strut assembly was a good idea. From the bottom or the top? Through the side. Oh geez. <laughs> like, you have to shove it all the way through out the grill. Ooh. To get the upper control arm off. Yeah, yeah, it's it's an interesting interesting idea to say the least. It sounds fun. Um, and the design behind them, um, Toyota is notorious for a one piece cross member, the cradle, mm -hmm. which you have to cut out to lower. Um, so it's a lot more cutting involved on a on a JDM truck than there is a domestic. So JDM. they they are easier to work with. Yeah. 2017 F-150. Okay. Seven inch lift. Yep. 20 by 12s. 37, 13 and a half. Ooh. <laughs> oh boy. You should have gotten 35s, brother. Imagine just kissing your crash bar goodbye. Well, at that point, I mean, crash bar isn't even going to be a question. Um, but on the F-150s, the back side of the front fender they built up with this super high density sticky foam and plastic. Mm. So it's really easy to shave away. And then, well, and then there's a, a aluminum pinch weld in there. So it's all easily manipulative. Manipulative? Manipulated. manipulated. Yep. <laughs> Too much corn. <laughs> um, that was cool. <laughs> so it, it gets a little bit tough to, to fit them. You, you can shave it away, shave it away, shave it away. Um, you're gonna have to cut the front bumper if you want full turning radius. It's doable, but you're gonna go through a few sawzall blades, a few flap discs, making yeah, the room. There's a lot of trimming that's gonna have to go on there to make that fit. Pineapple man. I saw that once to know if we can lift a new VW bug, right? Yeah, like I'm sure it's doable. There's nothing I can tell you right now, there's no lift kits out there for a new VW bug. Um I don't exactly know what the suspension design would be. All I know is that I hate working on Audis and Volkswagens because there are always problems. Josh can attest to that. Okay, <laughs> he's it, on air though. That's but a it whole never other goes well. There's always something where they're like, we're gonna put 18 control arms like this, and then the bolts are gonna be blocking each other yeah so you it's have like, to take them out at the same time yeah, it's like one of them traps like you have the to chinese this, finger trap yeah you get your finger stuck yeah, yeah it's yeah, yeah. insane to work on this guy here says bring back matchups and how to's in the Shh, i never knew series Shh, I, can't, I never knew i can't say that good news for you is we're actually bringing that series back we've got a couple of those planned uh coming up Did, here i literally just shot, shot one last week yeah on my lift kit. Yeah, we're gonna be. I think that was what that was. Wasn't no, it? that was cool. That, that was, was cool, cool truck. truck. Shh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not shh. I never knew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, we're gonna be bringing this back. I think. Um, so we noticed that some of that stuff is those videos were filmed a couple of years ago already. So it feels like yesterday. Right. To be honest I'll with you, it. we're gonna revamp some of that stuff though, which is cool. 2018 Silverado 1500 with a Zone 4 inch. Can I put 35s? 2015 Silverado. Yes. With a Zone 4 inch. Yes. Is it a Silverado 1500? Does yes, 1500. 1500? Yeah. Um, short answer, no. 33s are what fits on those four inches. Um, if you want to cut it up, I don't know how good we can see. Oh yeah, absolutely. You can, right here you can see Look the, over the Dustin's angle. left shoulder. This guy right yeah. here. I'm gonna wait for it to catch up and then see see if it lines up. Cause it's, Keaton, where's my finger? Is it pointing at the, uh, at the fender? Uh, yeah, close enough. Yeah, you're gonna yeah. have to do one of them to a get major 35. 45. Yeah, um, same with the front bumper. So can it be done? Absolutely. Oh yeah, hey. Look. Oh look at that! It's can, yeah. It was perfect. <laughs> oh man, I couldn't have done that again if I tried. <laughs> um, okay, so 
I had a guy ask, what's the perfect leveling kit on a 2020 Silverado new body? So this, I have actually, the more of these that come into the shop, I've had a lot of questions on these because a lot of people are saying that, I'm gonna burp, excuse Ooh, me, pros. a two inch is too much. And on the new body the styles, and like it brings the front end just up a little bit. Um, a little squat. Then. General. <laughs> <laughs> Banker's gonna shank me. General consensus is that you need like an inch and a half to bring them level. I don't know. We've done like two of them here. I put two inch levels in them. They looked perfect. Okay. So any standard under strut two inch level will work, in my experience. Um, I. Of course, GM does weird things with different packages. Mm -hmm. um, the one we did was an AT4, and that worked out perfect. The other one was a Z71, so maybe just a regular standard LT, LTZ, or whatever other goofy packages they have yeah. it might be different. The AT4 will clear 35's factory, isn't it? The 2500. Me? Yeah. 2500. Wild. Um, there you go, Dustin. What do you got? I saw that. There are actually a number of companies that make those. I don't think we carry any of them. But, but like the legitimate lift kits or like spacers? Well, both. I think there are a couple of companies that actually make them, um, that make legitimate lift kits for those cars. Okay, so we're going to start a petition for Dustin to lift his Miata. Oh my god, nobody knows I have one of those. Well, the perfect... Soil it! It's in the perfect condition. To be lifted because you've done nothing exactly. within five years. That's not true. I put a new power steering rack in it last night. Okay, Bailey Howard, 2011 Chevy Silverado, 1500, eight inch lift. Would 40s fit on factory rims or how much trimming? Bailey, stop calling them rims. Uh, Brother. Bailey here has the same truck on the same lift, 35s, tons of cutting, but he's on 14 wides. Mm. So still 40s are not going to fit. Um, 37s, you'd be closer on stock wheels, but at the same time, I mean, I don't, there's a handful of 40 by 12 and a half. Usually 40s are starting to get into 13 and a half, 15 and a half, so you're going to have some serious yeah. issues well, with wide the tires. fat offset that the stock wheels have on rubbing the sidewall and the inside components. So um, you're going to want to get something a little bit wider to run 40s on there and then just cut the truck up. Okay, so Eric M., I actually don't know the answer to this question, and that's why I want to bring it up. Oh, what you got? 2020 Silverado 1500 diesel. Mm -hmm. Every six inch kit says not for diesel. He wants to run 35s or 37s. Okay. I don't know why they're saying not for diesels. We, we talked about this when the trucks first came out. There's really no reason that you shouldn't be able to work them in with the diesels. We had one up here. I went through as much as I could while we had it. Mm -hmm. um, Fuller brought that one up from Holiday oh, yeah, yeah. a while oh, back. Oh, yeah. I believe it was over winter. Um, I couldn't see any reason that the kits would not work for diesels. So that's going to be a really good question for you to tune in next week when I have Brad with me, and maybe Brad can shed some light. Yeah, he, he works know. really closely with these suspension vendors. He's probably going to tell you, it's like, oh yeah, it's because part number XYZ32784 is only rated for 2,326 pounds or something. You know. Or he's going to be like, oh, I don't know, and then drink his high life. Because <laughs> they don't. That's a, that's a Brad answer, because they don't. For real. Best suspension lift kit smaller than six inches and go. Best best suspension lift kit under six inches. Um, it's a very loaded question. What are you putting it on? Yeah, you, what are you putting? I'm gonna just. I'm gonna say, the three inch halo lifts. Mm. As far as ride quality and construction and everything goes, mm -hmm. halo three inch, um, hands down a great kit that is. Well, I mean, it's under six inches. It's only three. Super popular in the F-150s. They also make them for the Silverados. Um, premium kit, though. Premium. I mean, there's, yeah. you pay a dollar for those. Yeah, you know, absolutely. They're, but they're a fantastic uh, suspension kit. Um, <laughs> Brian Hernandez, D21 Nissan hard body wheel and suspension recommendations. Brian, I'm going to tell you that you need to drop that truck eight inches Put some 15 inch steelies on it and go do donuts. Burnouts everywhere. Yeah. Oh absolutely. my god, I'm so happy you said that. I almost died in the back of uh, back of a D21 one time. <laughs> We're doing donuts and I almost fell out. All right. Okay, Levi called them wheels. All right. What you got? 
What would look better? Black Cat Eye Chevy, chrome or black wheels. He's gonna order them tonight on custom offsets. Black, black Cat Eye Chevy. Oh man, um, it depends on what the rest of the, what he's got going on for the rest of the truck. I would pick chrome wheels. Be prepared to clean them all the time. If mm. you don't, if you want relatively less maintenance, go with the black ones. What year's your favorite Chevy? What year is my favorite Chevy? Yeah. Um, 2020. I mean, I like my have one. I like my 2020, but if I could, I would rather have like a 67 to 72 C10, mm. K10. Hard to beat a K10. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's my favorite body style. Fif was it 15 to 17 or 16 to 17? Uh, when they did the split headlight? 14, well, I mean, 14 to 19, or 14 to 18. But, but there one? was, uh, there was a period of time there was something similar to this, yeah. yeah. That was 14, 14 to 15. Mm. I love it. I just love everything about that. It looks so good. See, I, I prefer the 16 to 18 updated front end. Mm. You really can't go wrong. They both look great. Do you have anything for the new Ford Bronco? When we find out what bolt pattern we will. Mm, Anthem says the Anthem Gunner looks amazing on the Cat Eye, and they are correct. Also a fantastic wheel. Very true. Oh, AC. So, this is a great question. Mm. Do you guys get attached to your builds? Mm -hmm. How long have you owned your Miata? Like five years, four years. It's been a long time. Like, I want to talk about it, okay? My, my <laughs> black Silverado, I bought in 2012, 2013. Mm -hmm. And the only reason I sold it is because it was going to Taylor and I could actually technically keep it. I get super attached to everything I build, um, especially anything we put a lot of effort into. You know, that's, that's a big reason CO2 is still here. Mm -hmm. Sean rarely drives it, but we're all just so attached to the truck. Same with the Super Duty, super attached to, you know, I mean, you spend that much time and that much effort working on a truck, you, you have to get attached to it. And that's what I was gonna say, I think it's, it's different to buy a truck and just drive it stock. But when you, when you go through the time, especially like this thing, ladder bars and powder coated suspension and custom headlights and, and you know, painted interior bits. And when you take it from a regular truck to really your own, um, you become so attached to it because it is, it's yours. And there's nothing like it out there. There's nobody else that has the same truck that you, excuse me, that you do. Until you build an all blacked out 07 to 13 Silverado 1500. But even your truck, her truck now. Her there's truck. nobody that has that same truck with those headlights that you built with that light bar, you know? Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. There are similar <laughs> trucks, but there's none that are the same. Speaking of, is Taylor building her truck anymore? She is. She is. I and mean, it's going to be dope. I'm I, excited. As soon as I get my 2020 done, we're ripping that one back apart. We're going to do a whole build series on it again. Mm. So you guys will get to see that. It'll probably be over winter at this point because everything is taking so long. Man, this year is weird. It's been a weird year. I So they've been talking about canceling SEMA now, which is I'll cry. catastrophic to the industry. I was honestly. ready to go. It's, it's going to be rough. If that does happen. 14 Chevy Silverado. Would you rather BDS coilovers or super lift with king coils? Yes. Right. You can't go wrong. You really can't either go way. wrong either way there. They're both going to perform amazing. Mm -hmm. um, my argument would be if you're going to actually use it, the kings are probably going to perform a little bit better than the fox just because they're, they're a little bit easier to tune. Um, but the Fox, if you upgrade to the DSC, is you know it's a pretty even playing field. I re yeah, you really can't go wrong either way. I think they're both a fantastic quality yeah, product. Absolutely, I'm a big fan of both of them. I've installed plenty of plenty of both. <laughs> Answer my question. I know you fixed the rims. We answered you. We said chrome wheels are going to look best, Levi. Chrome wheels are going to look best. But black wheels are going to look good, too, if you don't want them. Yeah, sense. I asked him what wheels he was looking at. And then, I mean, if you let us know that, then we can probably give you a better answer as to which one will look better. Because there's, there's so many options there.
<laughs> so, so Levi uh, went outside to shoot a coyote, and he didn't catch, <laughs> he didn't catch our, our reply. That is like... <laughs> That's the perfect reason why he didn't catch it. That's awesome. They just asked if I would ever own a Ford. Yeah, I think you would. If somebody handed you the keys to a Super Duty, I don't think you'd say no. Well, no kidding. Yeah. I, I would never personally go to the dealership, purchase myself a Ford, and make payments on it. Or, you know, pay for it. Really? But when Sean approaches and said, you can build a show truck as long as it's a Super Duty, I wasn't going to say no. No, sir. So. What lift would you recommend for an 89 F250 two-wheel drive? Pre-runner, right? I mean, that would be sweet, but I don't even know what's out there for an 89 F250 two-wheel drive. I mean, probably something from like Skyjacker, people walking wiener dogs outside. Oh, Jesus, the little guys. Uh... uh. What are the pros and cons of custom finish suspension? If you're done with that question. If you're not, we'll finish that one first. Can you say that again? Pros and cons of a custom finish suspension. Pros is it looks super cool all the time. Cons is you have to be way more careful putting it in. You're constantly going to be cleaning it. You're constantly going to be looking at it and going, why the hell do I have rock chips everywhere and touching it up? For real. Um, you know, once you go to that level, you'll find yourself not driving a vehicle as much. You'll take it out when it's super nice only. And you'll be avoiding every pothole and every stone you see on the road. and every Or you won't. Chunk. Or you'll just whistle and diesel everything about it. Paxton wants to know what he should get for his first car. He's got the $20,000 limit. <laughs> Twenty grand can go a long way depending on where you are. Um, Whew. 07 to 13 Silverado is where I would start. Yeah, because I, well, you might even be able to touch a little bit higher mileage, uh, 14 to 18 at that point, you know? Possibly. Depending or, on what trim package yeah. you're looking for. Depending or, on where you are, you yeah. can get into a Duramax for that price. Yeah, that's true too. Juan wants to know if we have a shop in South Cali. We don't, but it'd be a lot cooler if we did. It would be cool. Someday when we're as popular as Richard Rawlings, yeah, maybe we'll uh -huh. have a shop in South Cali. But Till then, Wisconsin it is. How stretched will 37 13.5s be on a 20 by 14? Furious, by the way. How what? How stretched will a 37 by 13 and a half Fury be on a 20 by 14? Hardly at all. Yeah. It'll be super square. Yeah. You got a lot more sidewall there. You know what these are? No, these are 24s? 26s. Oh, they are 26s. 26s. But either way, it's a, it's a, is that a 13 and a half or a 14 and a half? Like, 13 and a half. Yeah, so it'll look just like this. It'll almost square on the sidewall. Right, you know? absolutely. Yeah. Just a little bit of round off towards the end there, but nothing too bad. <clears throat> well, okay, so this, I love this question. Ooh, there's, boy. there's two good ones in a row right here. Anthony, will you guys ever sell lowering kits for trucks, and why? It's not really our market, but they're cool. But you could. We could. I've been trying to get lowering kits on the website for a long time, guys. I think lowering trucks are cool. They're Again, they're not really our, like, <clears throat> that's not really our stuff. Like, we're not the lowered truck guys. We're the lifted truck guys, but, like, we're not the lowered truck guys, but our shop truck is a Cat Eye Silverado <laughs> with a four six drop on twenty two inch snowflakes. Yeah. So riddle me that. And it man. rips. <laughs> yeah. It's a cool truck. I don't know. It's just not really our dynamic, but um, it's not like you know we don't hate it. We're all about it. A lot of us guys, I know you like them. I like them. I love them. Um, a lot of the you and the videography team I mean, are super down with like either static or air ride on yeah. trucks. You I know? came from mini trucking background i mean mini like, trucking's cool man that was the cool thing when i was a kid so uh, uh, flying down the highway i know there's a local guy here it's got a little i think it's a t100 on air steven yeah and Show he, up, uh, steven. he's got the uh the titanium uh plates so when he flies down i have a video of him flying down 441 and he flipped you know he hits it and it drops and it just sparks rainbow sparks yep. and it's awesome um so anthony ask 
Ask us this next week when Brad's here so we can get a straight answer. Because I've been arguing that with him for a while. Um, this is the other question. Speaking of WD, what do you think of Monster Max? <laughs> Stay tuned. We just did a video on this, actually. It's, um, it's all right. <laughs> it's a WD. That's all I'm going to say. It's a cool looking truck. It is a neat looking truck. It's a shame he owns it. Even if, even if you take out all of your personal bias, whether you like or don't like him, it is a fantastic build. Big old truck, massive tires, rear steer axle. I mean, the brake on the driveline, it, it's built correctly. It's not like it's built bad, you know. Oh, absolutely. Oh, Levi's back on here. He's looking at the RBP Avenger in chrome or the MO970 in black. Oh, man. The MO970 is an iconic wheel. I'd go with the RBPs. Really? I, the, the motor metals are a good-looking wheel, absolutely. But I like it's the a, Avenger design. If he's doing chrome. black and milled, not black and machined. I don't like the black and oh, machined sure, face. Sure, sure. That black and milled on a cat eye would be fantastic. Logan asked when my truck build is... Hopefully soon, Logan. I honestly, at this point, I'm thinking August. Yeah, COVID-19 put a pause on a lot of our plans. A lot of them. And we're really excited to bring it to you guys, but it's still, we have some stuff in the works that we're waiting on yet, so. <laughs> Does Sean pop into the business often? Only when he wants to drive us nuts. For, for <laughs> real. <laughs> no, he's, here, he's here quite a bit lately um, when he's not on vacation. Wrap or custom paint? Ooh. Who's paying for it? <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> you can do a lot of really cool things with paint, but you can also do a lot of really cool things with wrap and then change it. Um, but what I'm a big fan of with custom paint, if, you, you know, if you're doing something crazy, let's take the K350 for example. The wrap job sticker dude did an amazing job on that. It looks so cool. But what I love about if that was painted if we could have done it in the door jams. Like, I yeah, love that. Yeah, you get that, like, that the lines extra that touch. and stuff. Yeah. Um, that's just, <clears throat> you, it's doable with wrap, but it, it doesn't hold up, and it's just, it is a pain for the installer. Mm -hmm. um, so in that aspect, I, I would choose paint over wrap, but again, I get attached. When I build something, that's the way it stays. I don't change it often. As I long do as I don't have to pay way. for it, I agree. Oh, sure, for sure. I mean... Yeah, if I had to pay for it, paint cut like good custom paint work like that is ten G's. Oh, you know, it absolutely, easy. absolutely. Dent side F one fifty or square body K ten. K ten. Um, I think the dent sides look good. You don't. Not, you don't like the dent sides. They're not terrible, but. Eh. Oh, so Elijah with the 89 F250 is back. He said, there's a BDS and Rough Country option. Is there going to be any difference in ride quality being that old? Yeah, right? Because yeah. that's not just an add leaf system, right? You're still Correct. replacing shocks. You're still replacing shocks and springs. Yeah, the BDS is going to ride better than the Rough Country. The other difference there, too, is you get that warranty with the BDS stuff. Right. You, you get know. a little bit better finish quality. You get a little bit better bracketry and stuff. So. Correct. What's your thoughts on the branded title C10? Player C10. Um, I love that truck. And I think it's important to note that they know that the wheels look ridiculous. That's yeah. why that's why he did it. Uh -huh. Was just to make everybody mad about putting 14 wides on a C10. Um, it's a super clean, <laughs> clean truck that, that looks super rusty. Yeah. Um, but it's supposed I, to look rusty. Exactly. It's to look like that. I love that truck. Obviously, I would do something different with the wheels and everything, but... I, that is, I love it. Yeah, it's a neat, it. it's a neat truck. Yeah, let's let's get one more. It's seven o'clock already. That went quick. Phew. A lot quicker than the last time. Right. Here we go. Twenty twenty Rebel with a three inch lift, and I was wondering if I can fit thirty fives without trimming. Um, but yeah, you should be able to fit thirty fives on there, no problem. Depending on what wheel, you know, what wheel with. Yeah, yeah. With, obviously. obviously not fourteen wides, twelve wides, or anything like that. But we did a Rebel here not that long ago. Well, I guess it was probably last summer already. Um, 10 wides, 35s on a leveling kit on the front, but that had the air. Mm -hmm. So, it, how crazy is that? 10 wides and 35s on a leveling kit. Right. Well, when you aired up, you had full range. When you aired down highway driving, you could drive it, but you couldn't turn all the way. Still neat. It's still neat. 
there's a lot of questions about performance mods. Like, do we recommend them? Best performance mods? Always mod your stuff. Yeah, I mean, there's the answer is always yes. It's yeah. just a matter of what you want to spend your I money on. I think the most you're going to get a handheld tuner that has the ability to download custom tunes is going to be your best overall mod. Um, you know, and then you do supporting things like exhaust and intake and stuff like that. But besides wheels, tires, suspension, custommodsets.com. <laughs> besides, sorry, it's like muscle memory at those, this point. Um, that's what I would I would go for performance mods. Oh yeah, forced induction. That's my go-to. Boost the world. Oh, DJ coming in. This is a good one. Okay. What do you say? What do you got? Thoughts? You're probably not going to know this one either. I'm sorry. It's fine. I apologize. Thoughts on the PMF lifts. So, PMF is he makes lift kits, but also components for Super Duties and ramps. I actually have a lot of PMF components on the K350. Diff covers, really? um, uh, drag link, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, heavy duty stuff. He does a really good job fast turnaround. So those guys, those guys do a good job. They know what they're doing and they only do straight axle trucks. So they really have it on lock. Really good options there. Um, I don't think we're, I don't think he does resell like drop ships, so oh, I don't okay. think we'll ever be able to get his stuff on the site. But he's retail only. Yeah, makes sense. but he he's got some really good quality components to beef up some of the things that some of these kids lack. He's he's really hit that market good. So somebody's ripping. Connor, I saw a little <sighs> red beetle go that I way. I saw that. Um, all right, guys. So that's gonna wrap up tonight's lifted live. Um, again, remember that this is going to go up next Thursday before the live stream. So be sure to. Give us some ideas what you want to talk about next week, um, and leave some comments. You know what we can uh, what we can discuss. I don't think Dustin's going to be back next week. I think. But it's we didn't be think back. that this week either. We didn't think that this week either. Somebody didn't know what day it was. Date. I'm gonna need you to not call me out like that <laughs> on the internet, okay? Dustin had a rough morning. Let's put it that. Had way. a rough day. <laughs> Send some calendar invites for the end of the month and not this week. Anyway, yes. we made it through it. We survived. Yep. We got to eat some pizza. We got to eat some. Have some corn. Have some corn. So we will catch you guys next time. Peace.